any pathology, the best way to organize your knowledge is to compartmentalize your information base. So it is important to know the causative factors of a pathology, then the clinical uh, assessment, history and physical examination, investigations to be performed, management strategies based on management objectives, and then uh, preventative measures. Let's look at atrial fibrillation. What are the causative factors of atrial fibrillation? Chronic hypertension, ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathy, valvular disease such as mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, and tricuspid valve disease, uh, chronic alcohol intake, or sometimes alcohol binging. What do you look for in the physical examination? You confirm the diagnosis by feeling the pulse, which is irregularly irregular. Then you calculate the rate to assess whether the ventricle response is fast or slow. Then you also, in the history and physical examination, you look for features of causative factors such as a regurgitant murmur, a stenotic murmur in the mitral region, any evidence of recent weight loss or uh, heat intolerance suggestive of uh, thyroid excess. S3 gallop of cardiomyopathy. Then you go on to decide on the investigations, a 12 lead ECG to confirm the diagnosis and also to assess the ventricular uh, response. A full blood count is useful, electrolyte profile, uh, liver function test, gamma GT will be elevated in those who consume alcohol in excess in a chronic manner. If there are clinical features suggestive of thyroid disease, it is important to request thyroid function tests. An echocardiogram is useful, particularly look at the left atrial size. Left atrial size, if it is enlarged, is a sign of chronicity of atrial fibrillation and also increased thrombogenicity that can lead to stroke. Look at the valves, particularly the mitral valve and tricuspid valve in echocardiography for any pathology left ventricle ejection fraction is useful. Then we go on to management of atrial fibrillation. This is very important because management strategies and objectives are multiple and varied. The primary management objectives in atrial fibrillation is symptom control with rate control or rhythm control, and then stroke prevention due to uh, thromboembolism from a cardiogenic uh, source, particularly from the left atrium or left atrial appendage. So for rate control, the strategies include drugs such as uh, beta blockers, which are the most potent in uh, rate control uh, aspect, calcium channel blockers, digoxin. Most often a single drug is unable to control the rate, so therefore you have to add two drugs together. A common combination is a beta blocker and digoxin. Amiodrone can be used for rate control. Rhythm control has no uh, added benefit prognostically over rate control. However, those who are symptomatic with uh, the irregular rhythm or those who are unable to take anticoagulants, it is important to see whether we could get them back to sinus rhythm. The ways to do these include DC cardioversion. Once a atrial thrombus is excluded by doing a transesophageal echocardiogram, uh, particularly looking at the left atrial thrombus in that study. Uh, next, chemical cardioversion using amiodrone, uh, sotolol, or flaconide, or quinidine. Flaconide is a drug that has a lower side effect profile. However, it has detrimental effects and increased mortality in those who have established heart disease and structural heart disease. So therefore, it should be given to those who have no other cardiac pathology. Then, we come to uh, stroke prevention. Stroke prevention essentially involves anticoagulation. The stroke risk of a patient is assessed by looking at the patient's CHADS2 score. CHADS2 score uh, includes any history of congestive heart failure, hypertension, age, 
over 70 uh, diabetes mellitus or previous stroke if there's a previous stroke you give two points if the chance to score is more than two uh, then the patient needs anticoagulation with warfarin and the INR should be maintained between two and three there are newer agents that that are coming to the market that are either equal in efficacy and safety to warfarin or even better without the need for constant monitoring these drugs uh, include the bigger trend and rivaroxaban and there's a new antiarrhythmic drug in the market uh, recommended for atrial fibrillation called dronidarone this has less of a potency in getting patients back to sinus rhythm however overall clinical prognosis and outcomes including mortality and um, rate control is effectively achieved by dronidarone and it has a lower side effect profile because it does not have the iodine moiety that amiodarone has. So this is a short uh, tutorial on atrial fibrillation with most important factors that you need to remember for your exams as well as for your uh, clinical uh, rotations. Thank you.